Hey, it's great to have you guys gather together for Life Group, and I just want to say thank you to you for making an investment in your spiritual life. Those of you that host life groups or lead life groups, what you're doing is uh, so important to make such a big difference. And for those of you that are doing this for the first time, thank you for taking that step of faith. We're going to spend four weeks talking about relationship goals. What are we? Well, week number one, we talked about being Christ-centered. Next week is really important. I think it might be my favorite of all four. We're going to talk about being mission-driven. Then week three, we're going to talk about being devil kicking. In other words, we have a real enemy that does attack, and we need to stand strong together. That's what you're doing in life groups. That'll make all of our relationships better. And then week four, we're going to talk about being covenant keeping. What I want to do in this first question is just keep it light with some new people. Maybe you're getting to know each other. I talked on the weekend a little bit about some of the stuff that Amy and I have been through, some of the challenges that we have. It's funny to me that it shocks people. Yes, we fight over the temperature, just like a lot of people. We fight over how to load the dishwasher. We fight about how I walk, talk, chew, think, breathe, and the list goes on and on. What I'd like to do as we start off today, just to keep it fun, what's the funniest fight that you've had? If you're married, you've probably gotten into some big blowout about something really, really small or insignificant. If you're not married, certainly you've got siblings and you about killed each other on a trip or you've got friends, a roommate, something that you do or they did that's really irritating. Let's talk about one of the funniest fights that you've ever had. Well, I hope that there weren't any fights that broke out when you're talking about your funny fights because somehow that happens when we're just telling stories. You didn't tell that right. So uh, let's move on to a little more serious question. And in the message, we talked about that all of our lives are centered around something. Um, what we center our lives around really impacts, if you remember the circles we talked about, it impacts what we believe. It impacts how we behave. Then it impacts the influence that we have and the impact that we have on others which you center your life around, ends up influencing every area of your life. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the last seven days and think about how you lived. Based on how you lived, what would you say was the center of your week? Think about it. Maybe you spent a lot of time with your kids. Maybe you're focused on your career. I want you to be really, really honest. Maybe it was your self-image. Maybe your mind was consumed with money or whatever. Think about where you went, what you did, how you interact with the people, what you thought about, what consumed you. And I want you to be really, really honest, not based on what you want to say, but what was on actual, what you actually did. In the last week, what would you say was the center driving force of your life? Let's talk about it, and then let's see what God does as he conforms us to the image of his son, Jesus. Okay, as we dealt honestly with question number two, what you center your life around— if you answered anything besides Jesus, and I think that a lot of us would by practically how we lived, what we want to do is we want to ask, how can we put him first in all that we do today, every single day? We want to be Christ-centered. We want to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we want to love our neighbor as ourselves. How can you be more Christ-centered today? Well, we know one of the ways we can do this is by seeking him daily in prayer. Let me give you three verses. You may want to jot these down or they'll be in your notes that you'll want to look at about prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17, that will tell you how often you should pray. How often should you pray? First Thessalonians 5.17. Do your prayers matter? James 5.16, I hope you'll read that and let God's word answer just how much your prayers matter. What should you pray about? How stressed you should, should you be? What do you do when you are stressed? Philippians 4, 6 will help answer that. I want you to go and just read those verses, let them speak to you, and then we want to talk about prayer. I gave you one assignment for those that are married, and that is to pray to, together every single day. If you're not married, we're still praying every single day. It's important to us. This is going to be a foundation for us. I want to talk about the idea of prayer, and I'm going to give you a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, where would you rate your prayer life today? You might answer it as a couple. You might answer it individually. But on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate your prayer life today? I'll be honest. I'd probably put mine kind of more like a 6 or a 7. This week, to just tell you what I've done, is we had our whole staff in. And I did pray. I prayed for a lot of other people. 
Um, I prayed for some staff members that, that were hurting, but my prayers were more of a God help these people than they were an intimate time with God. And my excuse was that I was busy, but the reality is that I needed more intimate time with God this week. So I'd say probably six. And now that I'm telling you, I feel more compelled to get that number up because I need his presence every single day. Um, how often do you pray? First Thessalonians 5 tells you. Your prayer is powerful. James 5 tells you. What do you pray about? Philippians 4 will tell you. Let's take a moment, be really honest. Scale of 1 to 10, how passionate and intimate was your prayer life this last week? And then maybe God will take it to another level. Once you're through with this, you're going to want to spend some time praying for one another. Uh, if you're not normally a prayer, maybe take a step of faith and pray. You'll experience the presence of God, and we grow so much closer together because life is better together when we serve Jesus with each other.